an expression that you can only feed a hungry man because a full man obviously isn't hungry same thing is true about a thirsty man is that you can give somebody a drink of water but if they're not thirsty they're not going to drink until the circumstances of life causes a person to want god they probably aren't going to seek god unless they like me stumble upon him in some way that god has designed for them to come to a place of realization of who god is what he is and how you might want him because of the circumstances that your life has brought you to i'm dumbfounded in these latter days that even though we have so much information that's increased we also have so much distraction that has caused not just the world to become like a harvest field you know right to be harvested but likewise it seems that there have been all kinds of weird offshoots and growths that have come up that like jesus said the wheat grows up with the tares that uh, weeds will grow with the crop that we have to let as it were both grow because god said he in the latter days would separate his wheat from the chaff he would toss it up in the air so to speak the circumstances of your life will determine the faith that you have whether it be founded upon theology your ideas about god or your teachings and understanding in religion or whether it be on a personal relationship that you're developing in a real way that continually grows and that you're you may not be perfect but you're working on it and you want god to perfect you and to change you and to make you into his image so if you're like me sometimes you do get discouraged by seeing the wheat or seeing the tares from the wheat and seeing the growth of the weeds as it were but also know that the wheat's growing and the plants are doing just fine and that everything in its season god ordains and causes it to be accomplished i know i can't focus in on people who have already decided for themselves and they're adamant and convinced that what they're teaching is right and they're going to go that way no matter what and you know it's like even though you can tell them you know at least have a personal relationship with god so you can figure out the truth they don't even go there you know a lot of times people want to believe what they want to believe because that's where they want their god to be and you have to let it go and let god and pray for him and for me that's the hardest thing even though i trust god with all my heart and soul i hate to see when false teaching or false ideas about god are portrayed as though they were accurate and it just it's sad in daily life <clears throat> the god of peace make you perfect in every good work to do his will be perfect be of good comfort be of one mind live in peace and the god of love and peace shall be with you by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves it is a gift of god not of works lest any man should boast every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the father of lights with whom is no variableness neither shadow of turning work out your salvation with fear and trembling for it is god which worketh in you both to do and to will of his good pleasure be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by jesus christ unto the glory and praise of god not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves but our sufficiency is of god i am blessed oftentimes by those who have developed the graces what we call the graces of god whereby you see a person who mayhap deals a lot with people that are contrary and they are able to just well you know i'm happy for you but this is what i think you know and they go on their way well i'm happy for you and this is what i do and they go on their way and they are content in their relationship with god and for me in two things one in ministry it's such a challenge sometimes to just not be letting the zeal not for his father's house but the zeal for the word of god you know to consume you because then you beat up people 
or the zeal for you know righteousness or Jesus to not consume you because sometimes you want to just say look wake up shake them you know and you're gonna get there but lots of times you just have to recognize that it's your salvation that God is working out in you and the same thing is true of someone else that they may need to go in a wrong direction in order to get to a right and you have to let God and them on a one-to-one -one basis sometimes bring their salvation to fruition in whatever way that may be it just breaks my heart sometimes it's hard for me so for me this word is good that you know God works in me to allow people their own choices because maybe that keeps them safe from the world and its ways and other things but it just seems so sad when you could have so much more in a personal dynamic with God that he can speak to you and share with you from his word the truth and you could see the whole picture as one loving example of God our Father as he deals with us his children and develops in us the graces of God that we would become like the children of God and become like Jesus and inherit with him you know, the fullness that he promised us to be one with the Father it is true that there will be no little bit of hell in heaven, so I pray that God works out his salvation in you as he does in me. I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Jesus, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. Let us go therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. Jesus said, Come you yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Often in the turmoil of the world and its ways, you have to separate yourself from all the angst of it inputting into you its anxiety of its own termination coming soon. The world and all of creation knows that the revelation of the sons of God is coming, that Jesus is coming soon, very soon. And in some, it produces a joy, and they look forward to his return. In some, it produces a, a desire to postpone it. In some, it produces the, the anxiousness of, oh my God, you know, I need to get cleaned up or ready. Or in others, it even produces, you know, an antagonism towards the things of God and towards the the people of God and in others still more it even produces an obsession with the things of the world we as we see that we live in these latter days need to start putting away our toys and our joys and our little worldly things that we've added to our, our Christianity you can't tell me any pastor or any elder or any deacon or any person that you know is in ministry that you know yes my Harley was given by God and it was definitely what God wanted for me and now I have my Harley toy, you know, and I'm a big boy, you know, and I can play and have my joy. No, you know, it's time because of these latter days to get serious about our worldliness and let us strive to put aside some of the things that distract us so easily in order to not just be content where we are, you know, in doing what we're doing, but rather honestly and openly praying and desiring even more so those who are not saved to come into the kingdom of God. And if that means you use your Harley, praise the Lord, you know, that's up to you and Lord, but don't get carried away about all your little pettiness and selfishness and, and vanities, when right now we need more so the tenderness and the compassion and the reaching out in a very real way daily to bring in the last of the harvest because the time is at hand. Let us be mindful and, and tender towards those 
who need us more now than ever before. And likewise, let us draw back away from the world and not let it influence us in these latter days.